What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're back with another deck profile and it's a deck that I haven't updated in a very long time. However, I think this deck is really really cool and it makes use of one of the coolest dragon monsters in my opinion and that's Stardust Dragon. But it's not just a Stardust deck, it's an Assault Mode deck profile. I think this deck is very very powerful. It's built to compete against everything in today's metagame which is really really cool. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We're in 2023 now and we have so many big ideas for this channel. You guys don't even know. Outside of these deck profiles, I have so many entertaining ideas and videos that I'm going to be posting for you guys soon. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right. So just before we get into this profile, I do want to say I haven't updated this deck in like probably a year now. And that's not even a New Year's joke. It's actually been like 10, 11 months. And I think this deck is super, super powerful. And it has a way to play in today's format. These decks with small engines can be really, really nice to play, especially as rogue decks, because you can fit a lot of anti-meta strategies in these engines, right? So let's get right into the deck profile. We are starting, of course, with two of the Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, the boss monster of your deck. This card is absolutely powerful. It's 3,000 attack. It tributes itself as cost, and then you can negate a card on the field. And then on top of that, if this card is destroyed, you can then special summon a Stardust Dragon from your graveyard. The Stardust Dragon essentially is the one that you're going to be using to make this card, right? So it floats as well. It's a negate. It's a very very powerful card big 3k attack also the really cool thing about this when you activate its effect to negate it will come back in the end phase so it's not like you're tributing it as cost to negate and then it's just sitting there it's, it will come back so you're gonna have it back on your side of the field and you're gonna try to push for a lot of damage with this card so assault mode of course being the boss monster of your deck then we're playing the entire assault mode engine we're playing three side reflector the most important card in your deck this is a one card combo whether it's your normal summon or you get it off something like emergency teleport this card is just a one card combo for your entire engine so that you can get to your assault mode stardust dragon and then we're playing two assault beasts now we're not playing assault sentinel the reason for that is you guys will see later but we're playing an engine essentially that makes it a little bit tougher to play assault sentinel also assault sentinel does take up your normal summon and that's kind of the, where the synergy dies down you guys can see it here we're playing the brave package the brave package is really really good in this deck again because it's a one card combo if you can do the adventure combo which is also like a one 1.5 card combo then you're setting up multiple negates right but the thing is with this you can't be using normal summons to get the effects off also if assault sentinel gets stopped in your combo then you're kind of in a weird spot so we're not playing the assault sentinel but we are playing two assault bees this can help us deck thin a little bit because you can discard it to get your assault mode activate this card will also be able to special summon your assault beast back from your graveyard so psy reflector assault beast very very important in the combo and of course we're playing two assault mode activate the reason we're playing two so i was playing one for a while but the reason we're playing two is because there are a lot of times where you can actually resolve the second one and make a second start as regular assault mode and then that does become pretty powerful so that's why i like to play the two again this is something you don't want to draw it's not the worst if you draw it it's just something you prefer not to draw right but if you do draw it it's still not bad you are still playing the second one so you're always going to have one in deck so you can get your combos off and then we're playing a lot of the anti-meta stuff so like i said the really cool thing about this deck is the engine is so small this is all you really need again because it's a one card combo you guys can play a lot of cards that essentially beat the metagame now in today's format right now currently the metagame consists of the tier limit ishizu matchup as well as the fluandries matchup sprite you can mix in there as well but the nice thing is a lot of these cards are also pretty good against the sprite matchup as well so it also covers that it also covers a lot of the other rogue matchups as well so that's why i think this deck is very powerful and to cover all those matchups we are playing three bestial magnamut three bestial druis worm as well as two ghost bell now this essentially is the tier limit ishizu hate you guys are playing these cards because the thing is the druis worm as well as the magnamut of course are going to act as dd crows the really nice thing is their bodies for you as well so the thing is with this deck it always like historically was kind of a control deck where you would sit on Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, sit on some trap cards, maybe a couple of hand traps, and try to essentially just keep Stardust Dragon Assault Mode alive, and then kind of just every single turn do a little bit of poke damage, right? Whereas with this deck now, I think it's evolved to the point where you only really need to set up this your first turn, because with all of this disruption you guys have here, you guys are going to have bodies on your side of the field that can push for damage, so really turn three, you're just going to be pushing for game, and the really cool thing about Ghost Bell is it makes it so that you're not milling half your deck with the Ishizu stuff, right? So Ghost Bell is just really good into the Ishizu deck and so that's why we're playing these ratios over here and now obviously we're playing some generic hand traps we're playing three ash blossom ash blossom is something that's not super prevalent in today's format and the thing is with ash blossom it's not super impactful unless you're against the fluandries matchup so the thing is with this deck is it should
should in theory have a pretty good tier limit matchup because you're playing so many of the bestial cards you're playing the ghost spells and then in general you know the adventure package is not bad into the tier limit matchup as well so then why are we playing the ash blossom but that's because we really don't have an answer to the floundries matchup so ash blossom is really good into floundries so is imperm imperm is a really good board breaker as well if you're forced to go second your opponent sets up some sort of negate you can just start your turn by activating impermanence now of course if you already have a couple bestial monsters on your side of the field you can't really do that but the thing is if you already have a couple bestial monsters then essentially your opponent is not going to be able to make a board anyway so then imperm just acts as another form of disruption that you can set and then start playing on your next turn with right so that's the thing with this hand trap lineup i think this hand trap lineup is very very powerful because it covers everything in today's metagame right it's covering the floundries the tier limits the sprite and then every other rogue deck as well which is really nice i will say this though if you're locals like let's say you're taking this to a locals if your locals is really just all tier limits like you don't have any floundries players at your locals then what you can do is you can honestly just cut the ash blossoms max out on the ghost spells and maybe play two sarnirs here so you have more bestial cards right so just keep that in mind when you guys are building this deck i'm giving you guys a template where imagine you're going to regionals and you're preparing yourself for the room you're preparing yourself for every deck this is kind of how you want to build the deck but again if you're playing a more specialized event where it's your locals and it's all tier limit players then you know you're going to focus the deck to beat the tier limit matchup now if you go to a locals that has no tier limit players then cut the bestials and just play more hand traps like more you know whether it's playing like gamma gamma is a really good one and this is something that i wanted to talk about here as well the reason i'm not playing gamma is because of the bestial monsters now gamma is super super powerful because all of these cards tribute themselves as cost so your start is during the saw mode to negate will tribute itself as cost so let's say that's your monster on your side of the field you tribute it they have some sort of negate for it well it's already off the field so you have gamma then right so gamma is another really good option for you again if you're not playing into a tier limit locals but that's very unlikely tier limit is the best deck but like i said here you guys can play sarnir here as well maybe max out on the bell play two sarnir i know i'm kind of going in depth with this but the thing is with this deck is everything I'm about to show you guys like the rest of the deck is stuff that you have to be playing whereas these cards right here the bestials the bells the ash the imperm those are really format dependent if there's a format where veiler is really good or droll unlock is really good then you play those cards as well so i just wanted to give you guys that option then of course we're playing three emergency teleport three e telly three side reflector six copies you really want to get to it this is a one card combo this is a one card combo you are good to go right then we're playing the adventure package the adventure package is really good going first again because you're not really relying on a normal summon with this deck and then on top of that one card combos get into one card negates this is kind of the same thing if you start your turn with a water enchantress you get to a right you get to your fateful adventure you get to a griffin rider boom then you have another negate on the board so all of this is just one card combos which i think is really really powerful so of course we're playing three water enchantress now the reason we're only playing two bell and three ash rather than three bell and two ash is because if your opponent does end up milling you with the ishizu cards milling a water enchantress is never a bad thing you they just set your engine and it made it live right so that's why it's really powerful i really like three water enchantress playing the one griffin rider of course as well as the three right of armesier we're playing the one fateful adventure in the wild and draco back this is an engine that i feel like a lot of people forgot about but it's still a very very powerful engine and a lot of people are not prepared for it in today's format which is really nice then we're playing three pot of prosperity this card is really important as well because your entire deck is essentially one card combos and if you don't open your one card combo in your opening hand prosperity will dig you into either one of your e-tellies or one of your side reflectors so it's very powerful here as well as on top of your extra deck that's not something you really need every single card for there's a lot of just utility cards that really don't come up as often so prosperity is really really powerful then we're playing the one harpy's feather duster as well as the one called by the grave i think these are just really two powerful one ofs that you guys can play you know harpies i definitely recommend especially when you're forced to go second at least gets rid of back row i like this 40 card main deck honestly it's really really consistent and again it just really beats the metagame which is very important it just touches everything which is really nice so i really like this deck i really like this engine and now let's move into the extra deck and show you guys how it all ties together so here we're playing two stardust dragon stardust dragon of course we have have to be playing this because it's your access to your Stardust Dragon Assault mode. And then we're playing the one Savage Dragon. This does come up when you use the Bestial Monsters because the Bestial Monsters can sometimes go into a dark for you. And then you have Link Monsters in your graveyard for the Savage Dragon. But a lot of the time, this is just Prosperity Fodder. We're playing the one Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. The reason we're playing the one is because in time, it's pretty good. The one Beals. Beals is just one of those funny cards where a lot of the time, uh, it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. So if you just put this on the board against a lot of decks, they might have a really hard time beating this. So I don't know. It's just one of those fun level eight 
synchros that I think is kind of cool. One Draco Berserker, one Trish. Trish is a card you can make as well. Keep in mind, Psy Reflector, if you guys don't know, it can level modulate, so you can actually make a Trish sometimes as well. You have a Baron de Floor. Baron de Floor is a very powerful card. When you level modulate into level 10, you can make Baron. Another level 10 synchro you can go into is Ruddy Rose. And because we're playing the Ruddy Rose, you have the Black Rose Dragon as well. It's just another option for you. And again, this is why we're playing Prosperity, because cards like these, cards like the Beals, maybe the Trish, all these you can just banish off Prosperity so you can get to your engine, get to your combo. And then we're playing the one Gusov Max. Gusov Max can come up funny enough. If you ever have two Stardust Dragon Assault Modes on the board, you can actually just make the Gustav. It's not going to come up very often. Again, Prosperity Fodder. But if it does come up there, you can burn your opponent for a game. So it can be very powerful in that sense. We're playing the one Wallow here. Wallow is really important because you're playing all the Bestial Monsters. You guys can make this as well. The one Dark, the one Unicorn, as well as the one Axis Code because you guys can make this engine again with the Bestial Monsters. And so the thing is with this extra deck is a lot of it is just utility more so than it is a need. The cards that you need in the extra deck, of course, are your Stardust Dragons. And then I would obviously play a couple of the level eight synchros because this is kind of what you're going into if you're not going into your Stardust Dragon. But otherwise, like this is all you need. And then the Dark, the Wallow, I think are very powerful as well as the Unicorn. All of these are just prosperity fodder. So I think this deck is very, very consistent. I definitely think you guys should try this deck out for yourselves because it's really, really powerful. Also real quick for anyone who doesn't know the one card combo, I'm actually going to show it off in today's video. I want to start showing you guys combos with deck profiles. Now, not every deck has a one card combo or two card combo, but I do want to show you guys like with this, it's a one card combo. If you guys are new to assault mode, this is how you're going to play it. So you're going to normal summon your side reflector. Again, if you have e you're going to special summon the side reflector. So either e or side reflector. It's a one card combo. You're going to activate its effect. Of course, you're going to add your assault beast. Then once you add your assault beast, what you're going to do is you're going to activate its effect, sending it to the graveyard. So you can search an assault mode activate, right? So now that this is in the graveyard, you can activate your side reflector, reveal your assault mode activate. And then once this is now revealed, you can special summon your assault beast and you're going to make it a level seven. So you're going to increase its level by three. And again, you can increase it by four if you want to go into a Trish, like a level nine synchro. But here we're just going to do the basic combo. Of course, depending on what the rest of your hand is, you can do funny things. With this combo, you're going to increase it by three. So now it's a level seven. Now that it's a level seven, you guys can make the Stardust Dragon over here with these two. And then this is like literally just your basic simple one card combo. Then you're going to set your assault mode activate. You're going to go into end phase. Then it's going to go to your opponent's turn. As soon as it goes into your opponent's turn, they have to activate something like, let's say in the main phase, whatever it is, if you activate this in the standby phase, you can do that as well. But you're going to activate your assault mode activate. Essentially, I can't show it to you, but you're going to activate it. And then you're going to tribute your Stardust, summon assault mode from your deck and boom, there's your one card combo. So I think it's a very powerful one card combo. doesn't really take much to do. And again, if you set up your adventure package beforehand, then you know that it's not going to get negated and you still have four cards in your hand to play with at this point. So if you have four cards, you know, let's say two bestials and an ash, right? Plus, you know, your water enchantress, like how powerful is that, right? So that's why I think this deck is really, really powerful. And it makes use of one of, you know, if not the most famous dragon monster in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. I mean, okay, never mind. Blue Eyes would be the most famous, but Stardust is like Yusei's guy. So kind of second most famous, whatever. You guys get what I mean. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys really took in what I said with Assault Mode. The really cool thing about this deck is you're playing such a small Assault Mode package and you're also playing the small Brave package or the Adventure package. And then the rest of the deck really is what you're going to be playing against any meta games. So if you're watching this video in like six or seven months and the meta is different, then what you do is you just change those hand traps to cards that are really good against the current meta game. So let me just reiterate that, all right? The Bestial Monsters, they're good right now. If you want to play Assault Mode, that's how you're going to play it right now now. But in six months time, if the Bestial monsters aren't great, and you know, let's say Ash and Baylor and Droll are really good, then you'll play those instead. So I just want to be able to give you guys the template and then you guys can obviously build your deck and build this deck however it's needed for the metagame. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We have so many videos planned for 2023. I'm super excited to get right into them, but you guys have to subscribe and stay tuned if you guys want to see all those really cool ideas, even just outside of deck profiles. I'm going to continue with the deck profiles of of course, but we have so many entertaining videos coming soon. So I hope you guys did enjoy. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.